Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm your host, James Holst. Now today's episode, we are going to show you two different versions of how to put to one of the most simple presentations going, the slip bobber, to use to put some really great fish in the boat. We're gonna be fishing with Connor Kleist out in Detroit Lakes area for both episodes. Now, everybody that's followed this show knows that Connor is a pan fish fanatic and he's got his presentation really dialed in for targeting crappies once they move up into those weeds to spawn late spring. So keep an eye on what he's doing in the presentation that he's using to put some of these great crappies in the boat. In the second half of the show, we're gonna jump forward to midsummer, same general area out there in Detroit Lakes, and we're gonna put those slip bobbers to use targeting walleyes on the weed edge. Both patterns are a ton of fun and incredibly effective. So if you wanted to refine your slip bobber game, this show is for you. First part's crappies, we're gonna end with walleyes, so stick around, I think you're gonna enjoy today's show. There's fish. Nice one. Ah, feels all right. Out deep again. Up in the boat, buddy, up in the boat. I mean, the average size fish is really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm very missed. lucky we're not keeping today. Yes. Miss another one? I did. It happens. It does. Hate to admit it. You know, post spawn like this, I mean, there, there's a few fish spawning, likely still. But uh, most of the larger females are done spawning. They're starting to move out of the shallows and they're really willing to feed. I mean, not even uh, isolated feeding windows. I mean, you can tell we're basically right in the middle of the day here, uh, fishing fairly aggressively, trying to cover water to locate where these groups of fish are. Uh, but my point is they're willing to eat. I mean, they just went through the, uh, the rigors of spawn. They're coming into uh, you know, those warmer water temperatures, their metabolism's kicking up. The trick post-spawn is always just finding these fish. And you got another one. Ooh, that's a good one. It does look a little better. Oh yeah. Good old swing. Oh, oh yeah, there's a nice one. Yeah, it is. That'll, uh, that'll fill the hand. Big male. Nice. Big male. Putting the feet on. Ate that hot skirts, 16th ounce. Tipped with a fat head. Pretty simple presentation, but nice slow flutter. And let's see if I can get her popped out here. There must have been a little group in there because that yeah. previous cast, you had a couple, two, three try to eat it, didn't they? Very nice fish. Let's get them back. See the size of the fat heads too. I mean, they're not small by any means. It's not no pitching a little crappie minnow around, but don't have to give them much time when you feel the tick. They're there. There he is. I think we might be onto something. Well, I do know that the spot lock is doing a great job of keeping us where we need to be. Come here, you. Not a giant. Yeah, it ain't too bad at all. Come here. And we're doubled. This is fun. That's a big one. Oh, you got a hog back there? Now we're oh, talking. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. I think I was pushing it with the flip, but got it in the boat. She just got done doing her job, and yep. she's hungry. On that 16th ounce hot skirts and big old fat head. We'll get her back. You know, so many of these lakes out in this area around Detroit Lakes, uh, pretty good water clarity. And you know, that early spring crappie bite, the fish are moving shallow. You can actually see the crappies themselves. You can see the beds. That's prime time for a lot of anglers, uh, just because you get to use your eyes. You know you're in the right spot when you can feed, see the fish you're trying to catch. It's post-spawn. Once the crappies leave the shallows, they start to scatter where things can get a little bit tricky. Uh, so what Connor and I are doing, is we're looking for deep water adjacent 
to those shallow spawning flats. And there's, of course, there's a lot of ground to cover. And what we're doing is we're fishing baits that allow us to you know, fish pretty quickly. Uh, this is not the time to throw out a slip bobber and a minnow and let it do its thing. Uh, you might not be anywhere near active fish. So we're targeting these deep water pockets of water that cut up near those shallows and we're fan casting through them. And we've covered two thirds of this lake this morning using this method and we've been able to find about three spots where we know there's some pretty decent groups of fish that are willing to feed. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna work those spots where we've kind of isolated feeding fish and we're gonna work them over. That last one you had was a- Big fish. That was a chunk. She. Oh! Redemption. Nice. Not the same one, but I'll take it. You know, even the small ones here, I mean, that's, not a, that's a nice 10 and a half, 11 inch fish. It is. And what I love to see, this fishman has been caught before. Yep, I had one you know, earlier. Hooking and slip, and it's fun because now you get to catch it again. My guess is he knows you by name. Ah, uh, he might. <laughs> he might. That's that Connor guy. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's safe. <laughs> You don't know their names yet, but you will. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say a man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. On the water, every second counts. So when there's a fish at three o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat. So you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. Oh, well, that's a good one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Look at you. Woo! And popped off in the boat. Good timing for that. Perfect. Yep, that's just another one of those spawned up. You got a few scars from the spawn, but it's a beautiful fish. Love it. I love pan fishing. It's just best time of the year for me, and to go out and do this, same Makes thing. Makes Connor happy. It does, it really does, I love it. But and you can see, once again, it was caught before. Best part about it, let them go. So they got a chance to keep growing. My guess is it recognizes the taste of your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've kind of changed gears here a little bit. Uh, we've kind of been doing that uh, one, two, uh, you know, presentation approach, fish kind of fast, locate some fish, then uh, cast to them with the, the uh, uh, hot skirts, jig, and a minnow. And uh, got to midday here, sun's real high in the sky, and instead of the fish continuing to drop deeper, uh, they've actually pushed real tight to a, a sharp breaking weed line here. Uh, it comes out to about uh, two and a half feet, and then it drops pretty quick down to seven or eight feet of water. And what we can see with our eyes, we got polarized glasses on, and any place there's like a lighter uh, composition to the bottom, we can actually see the crappies swimming along that weed edge over that lighter portion on the bottom of the, uh, uh, the lake here. So uh, we've added bobbers. And the reason we've done that is 
Fish aren't very aggressive right now mid midday, and we need to keep these baits real tight to that weed edge, but not in it. So we're going to be lobbing casts up into those weed edges and just kind of jiggling that bobber, and that's going to give that uh, bait underneath it just enough movement to trigger some strikes. That's the cast. Wiggle it just a little. There he is. Oh, I gotta get him through the schmutz. That fish just helped me big time. Do you see that? Went up and around the Went slot. Went all the way around the, the, the stack of crud. There are you. That thing is so dark, it almost looks like a rock bass. I assure you it isn't. No, that is not. Not with lips like that. This is pretty cool stuff. I need a minnow too. You know, the, the big difference here now, you know, earlier the fish were more aggressive. We were able to just fan cast along the shoreline break and put fish in the boat. Now what we're finding is that bait needs to be nearly vertical right in front of these fish. And they're very tight, like right on the edge of that vegetation. The only way to do that is with a bobber. Uh, if you were to cast it, you know, to keep it out of the schmutz, you got to basically pull it out and away, and the fish just are not chasing right now. So until later on in the day, these bobbers are going to have to do it. And I would assume that later on the day, these fish will get back on, more spread out along the edges, and those aggressive presentations will work better again. Yep. Got one on right here. I see that. Let's see if I can get him out of that thick stuff. That's a good one. Hardly hooked, but yeah, not bad. It's not fancy, but boy, it works, doesn't it? It does. Oh, I just missed one. God. What are you supposed to do when the bobber starts moving away? <laughs> Slowly reel down and <laughs> not set it like a walleye. It's what if I like, can't help it? Eh, part of the deal. It happens. Now I need a mill. There he is. I got one. That was a determined one. That bobber just went down nice and steady. There we go. Come here, you. Oh, yeah. I think this is a great time to pull the plug on an awesome day. Holy it has been. smokes, is that one dark. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's one of those males. <laughs> you know, they're both great fish. This is probably a male, too. But, I mean, the head on that fish of yours is, like, black as ink. It truly is dark fish, but... I mean, a great day. I want to thank you for sharing it with me today. Yeah. Had a ton of fun, learned a lot. Yeah. Crappie are not my specialty. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for watching everybody. Had a lot of fun today. And if you want to come out to the Detroit Lakes area and catch some crappies yourself with a great guy, Connor is the man on these crappies. So uh, look him up, give him a call. Introducing Suffolk's Advanced Fluorocarbon. A new level of suppleness. A new level of toughness. A new level of sensitivity. A new category of fluorocarbon. Hello Future. Available in six technique specific models, the new custom series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT Blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Deadeye Custom Series rods offer an ultra-responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Deadeye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Okuma is Inspire Fishing. Glacial Lake Stock is your number one source for Yeti ice houses. With our large inventory of new and used Yetis, our experienced staff will help you select the perfect model for the way you fish. From sale to service, Glacial Lake Stock has you covered. As an authorized Yeti service center, we can handle all your service or warranty needs and work to keep you fishing all winter long. Stop in today or check us out online at glaciallakestock.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. The Boat Center is excited to announce the arrival of the Delta Series by StarCraft Boats. The Delta Series is a premium quality fishing boat that offers refined and highly functional storage, exceptional performance, and a lifetime plus six transferable warranty. All Delta Series boats are available with highly reliable Yamaha outboards. 
to learn more, stop in today or visit us online, theboatcenter.com. And as always, remember to have fun fishing. All right. All right. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Right, Kine? Yes, sir. I see gold. Nice fish. I see the gold. You know, these fish aren't supposed to bite midday. No. Calm conditions. No. Gotta like it when they do, though. No complaints. They haven't read the rule books. That's all right. You know, you put a leech in front of them. Yeah. Nice fish. Yes. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Fish and slip bobbers with bait. Could be a minnow, could be a leech, could be a crawler. Deadly once you got the pattern together, once you got the presentation refined for summer walleyes like this one. Once they leave the shallows, this is it. And that walleye got that hook right there in the beak. That's a number six VMC resin live bait hook. What I love about that is it's a glow resin bead that's built right into the hook. That's a nice fish. First fish of the day, in the boat and heading back. Successful release. So now here's the time period. Uh, Mid-June here in Minnesota, you know, it's been a little bit of a colder summer, but fish have left the shallows, you know, weeks ago. We're talking about temperatures right now at the surface that are about 70 degrees. And what happens is, you know, those early season walleye bites that are so strong and prevalent up in shallow water, you know, that five foot rock pile bite or that eight foot shoreline bite with the wind blowing in, those are pretty tough to come by right now. And these fish have slid out off those shoreline breaks and they're out where the weed line stops. So what we did is we kind of found a little position here. There's deep coontail on this lake, and that's a weed that'll grow out to, you know, 15, 16, 17 foot of water. What we want to do is find an edge right where that coontail kind of transitions out. That's where we're targeting. Those fish, so these walleyes will just cruise that weed line and fish in these slip bobbers. You put that leech down there, it's down there swimming. These fish are moving along that coontail edge. It's such an easy meal, they can't resist it. There we go. Looks I gave, good. I gave that one an extra split second. If it's a walleye, it's a good one. That's what I like to hear. As long as you let me catch a few today, I'll be all right. Guaranteed. You always <laughs> hold your own. You know how this stuff goes, it's streaky. It is, it is. What, you know, what always kind of throws me is you want to use as small a hook as possible. Yeah. So that leech is down there moving nice and natural. So I'm fishing a number six VMC with that glow resin bead on there, right? doesn't leave you a lot of hook gap. It's just by default. No. Come here. Do we get to keep them? Yes, we do. Nicely done. Yup. And you can sure. see if you, when, you, when we're done taking a look at this fish here, we're gonna take a look at the electronics. So you can see when we're talking about being off the edge of the weed line, you can just look down on that uh, fish finder there and you can see there's just no scrub under the boat. But when we swing from side to side, we'll start to hit the edges of that coontail. And that's really where you want to be. Boop. All right. Free and clear. See you later, fish. Man, that's a healthy fish. I think we're in for a good one. I think it's you know, going to be a good day. We were just talking that, you know, anything you catch middle of the day like this, we got a late start. Definitely not started. You know, we didn't start today at sunrise. Uh, we got to uh, Connor about 1 o'clock today, came right out on the lake. Anything we catch between now and about, you know, 5, 6 o'clock, those are, those are bonus fish. But it's also a great sign. It kind of indicates that the fish are in a good mood. They're, they're, they're feeding today. We get those light levels a little lower. We stay on spots like this. We could be in for an absolute crush fest come sundown. Looking forward to it. I like that. All righty. Is it the right flavor? Well, knowing my luck, probably not, but it feels pretty nice. You know, you do all right. You I catch yourself why. saying things like, I can't wait till it starts to get dark, it's gonna be you know, even better. Yeah. This is awesome, it doesn't yeah. have to get any better. No. That's a nice fish. It is. He's ours. Every one of these fish is just quality. I mean, they're not huge, but there's no runts either. No, no. Healthy. Yes. Built nice and we'll get her back. Swim another day. Yep. So when you're picking a leech, you got a tub like this and you're looking down in there, uh, it's really easy to go for that great big giant leech. Everybody kind of, you know, focuses on, on the, you know, the jumbo leech. 
And what I'm looking for, you know, I like a, a larger leech myself, but uh, what I really like to see is one that's, um, you know, a little bit thinner. I don't like the big fat blobby ones, but I want one that's just swimming away hard in the dish. Pick that leech, because what he's doing in that dish, he'll probably do for you under the water. And that's what it takes to get bit. Those walleye see that uh, bait down there, it's really swimming hard. They'll eat that bait versus, you know, one of these other ones in the bottom of the dish that are hardly moving. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. What lies beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high-frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. Oh, I got another one going. This is getting crazy. Some shoulders behind that one. I hope so. Got my drag a little light from that last one. Had to grip the spool. You know, one of the things you'll notice is that both uh, Connor and I are fishing longer spinning rods today. And what's great about those long spinning rods, this one's a seven foot four Akuma Deadeye Custom Medium Light. Uh, it allows you to pick up a lot of that line. When those fish dump that bobber and you've got some bow in your line, it allows you to get the line up off the water without really moving the bobber a, lot, bobber a lot. Fish can feel that. And then, because we're fishing pretty light line and small hooks, these soft, long rods helping landing these fish. You really can't horse on them too much. Man, are these things just, they're Healthy. great looking fish. Well, that fish went after it. Nothing like a lively leech to get a walleye's attention. Come out nice and easy. They are just woofing those leeches right now. I mean, I kind of got myself rearranged here after that last fish. The bobber would just went toosh, back down again. Oh, Connor, you're always on something pretty special, bud. Glad you're, you're having fun. No, it's, it's a good time. It's hard not to. It really is. There's a lot of pressure over here. I mean, you look around, it's just houses and cabins and public accesses on every corner of the lake. And I'm going. Do it. How long did that take after you switched over to that hook? Not very long. Tell me little things don't matter. They do. When you're finesse fishing like this, absolutely. Everything matters. That's a nice walleye. Very nice fish. Come here, you. Oop. It saw the net and said, heck no. Yeah. Come here, you. Can't get away from them oh, at that that's time. That's a nice one. Very nice fish. And you really don't have to give them very long. When you no. see that bobber go, I'd rather take it too early. Look at that. Heck Popped yeah. right out. I'd rather take it too early than have to cut the line and waste fish, but very nice fish. and we'll Every one of them is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, even this one here with a few little uh, warts on it. We love them all. So just a real basic setup. This is a, you know, a, a VMC. It's a lighted slip bobber. We can actually turn that the light on and that if we're going to stay out uh, around dark. And then below that, uh, we've got a, a, a barrel sinker, an egg sinker. That's one eighth of an ounce. And then right below that, we've got a swivel. And what I like to use that swivel for is, this becomes kind of our replaceable section of mono. If you catch a pike, if he gets nicked up, it's real easy to replace. It's about an 18 inch long piece. I can replace it and not have to recheck my depth. And I always like using you know, a fairly heavy sinker. You think, eighth of an ounce, why are, you, why are you using so much weight? Just put on a couple small split shots. It gets the bait down there quick. 
below the sinker and between the hook, that's what gives that leech the freedom to swim down there. I just don't want that uh, a leech to take a long time to pull that bobber down and get it upright and down to those fish. I wanted to get it down there fast. So just a real basic setup and here's that hook. Not very big, not a lot of hook gap there, but that's really what you need to do to make sure that that leech is swimming real freely down there. If you throw a great big chub hook on there, they hardly move at all. So it's a sacrifice. You don't have a lot of hook cap, but that leech is gonna be a lot more seductive in the water. There you go. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm just impressed with how good and steady this bite has been all day long. Yeah. That little VMC glow resin treble. Just been the ticket. Excuse me, glow resin octopus. We use the trebles in the winter. Back you go. Ah, little fish. Nice. Ready? Yep. Bring it. Nice. There we go. Is it the right, right kind? I don't want to jinx it, but I think so. All right, Mr. Kleiss, you need to close this thing out. We, <laughs> we've been talking about staying out here till dark all day, but these videos are supposed to be short. I know. We got it's way tough. too many fish, so <laughs> I'll get the net. Let's end this thing. It's the right kind. Very nice fish. Oh, yeah. Right here. I'm going to call you Clutch. <laughs> it's a good name to have. Yeah, there's a lot worse, right? There you go. Beautiful. Thank you. You bet. Settle down there, buddy. That's a nice long one. A fun day. What are there? Slimy Abs high fives. Absolute <laughs> thumping during some tough conditions. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of today's show. For all that watched, I'm sure you'll agree, there's just something uh, incredibly enjoyable about watching a slip bobber slip beneath the surface of the water. Uh, it's as simple as it is deadly. And if you've had questions in the past about how to really refine your slip bobber game, this show, I'm sure, is gonna help you put some more fish in the boat. And before we go, I wanna say a huge thank you to Connor Kleist. Uh, he's a young up and coming angler with just some incredible knowledge in that area he fishes out there in Detroit Lakes. If you're looking to get in on a great bite with a real fun guy to fish with, look up Connor. Uh, he's a ton of fun and he's gonna help you put some fish in the boat. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.